investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks, Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, January the 26th, and we're looking at a Dow that's up. Uh, oh, I got Marvel there. It's just Marvel's doing very well. Uh, but it, it just went right to the 200 period moving average, and now it's up uh, 4.71. Okay, that's Marvell Technologies in the semiconductor area. Let's get back to our story. The Dow. The Dow right now is up 435 points at 34,734. There are a couple of things that are going on. Um, the most important for me has been that it has been the selectivity of what is moving well. And it's fascinating to see that some of the oldies, some of the traditional type stocks, the Dow type stocks, are actually doing very nicely. But if you come to the QQQ, look at this, the um, QQQ right now, look at the move that it's had from the high of, uh, from the high of, was that 368, I think it was, yep, 368, uh, back in November uh, 22nd, 408. Is that correct? Yeah, 408. Uh, we, we're looking at 408 coming down to the low of 334.15. That is a huge move to the downside. And that is why I'm saying that the, the, I'll be doing this in my uh, Saturday overview for my subscribers to my opening call. We're looking at a very different market as opposed to where it was going to highs early in uh, November and uh, perhaps early December, into the whole of November and to uh, early de uh, December based on the key indices. Then the serious decline has seen so many of those uh, amazing NASDAQ type stocks, the in Investor Business Daily 100 type, just get decimated. And now they're trying to establish some kind of a base, but they haven't really um, made the kind of base that says to you, uh, wow, that is a really nice V-shaped recovery, and now we can start heading higher. Even if we make the arch formation, that dreaded H, to do a retest, it should still be a pretty decent bounce. It's just in the process right now. What is happening is that we've got a lot of select areas, and the select areas include something like an XLE, which is the uh, S&P Select Energy Spider Fund, in a leg C in the daily chart, uh, almost in an independent mode. A weekly chart is leg C, monthly chart is leg E, breaking above all the previous resistance, going all the way back to uh, 2019, basically. And that just says that we've got a rotation going on for geopolitical economic reasons, and we've got to respect that. And that is good when a market has a rolling correction with some areas that were at highs, just taking 30, 40, 50 percent or more declines while other areas are really holding the foot. What was it? G G uh, GLW, I think it was. I, I saw, um, look at this. Maybe it's earnings, maybe whatever it is. Up 5.65 at 40.98 Corning Inc. Glass Products. Uh, just yesterday and the day before, it was in the 30, 33 area, 35. And yet it is at 40.91. And that's what I'm saying, that we're looking at areas that are core to the economic process. And that's the reason why I want to spend some time this coming uh, Saturday for subscribers outlining what I'm looking at for this first quarter of um, this first quarter of 2022. Now, let's just get back to our story. Uh, you're looking at the IWM, and this is another area. Look, IWM, IWM is the Russell 2000 ETF. It goes down to 191.23 three days ago. It's now at 202. You say, oh, hey, that's, you know, that's pretty good, 10 points. No, this is, this is nothing. This made a high back in November, November the 8th at 244. 
244 down to 191, I would say that is a pretty serious decline. Now, what's really important about this is that if you're looking at this, if you compare the regular ETFs, let's just go to the SPY. Look at the SPY. Um, up 7 now, up 1.7% at 441. Yes, it's a big move down from the 479 high down to the 420 low. Uh, but that 200 period moving average, we went under it, now we're over it. That so far is a, a sign that says we're trying to establish something that, that finally gets the MACD histogram. That's the 9 above the 14, uh, sorry, the 9 above the, it's the 9 period differential that is, uh, above the 26 period exponential moving average. Well, it's actually far below it right now. And what we're looking at is within the context of uh, within the context of the histogram, the little vertical lines, this is the first time we're seeing a little squeeze that says uh, the lines are starting to um, decrease. And that's really important. But to get this MACD to cross positive, I'm not sure why is that why is that green that should be pink oh anyway yeah that, that's the um, that's right i understand it right and what we need now it's a minus 3.44 we need to see the histogram start to improve and that's going to take a lot that's going to take a price move to the 447 area i don't know about that's the pink nine period moving average the black 14 period moving average is 4 452 so what i like to do and this is what i do subscribers know this is basically what i i try all the time is i try to forecast and forecasting is always very difficult but i'm only looking at patterns that could appear and this pattern says there could be a bounce and that bounce could go a little higher and then we've got to be careful that we don't start to do a retest of the recent lows i have i have to say i'm not predicting that i'm saying these are patterns i look at all the time and this is what I would normally do in a v, in a V-shape attempt at a turnaround. The day is young. We've still got the Fed speak to come. We just don't know. That's number one. Number two is if you're looking at gold, look at this. Gold is down a little bit here. It's down 16 uh, at 1836. It hit a high yesterday in the continuous contract of 18. Was that 57? 18, 54.2. Yesterday, and now it's trading at 18.29. No big deal. But I said before that I don't see gold really having a superlative breakout to the upside. I do see that it's within a trading band. It's just making higher highs and higher lows. And now we've got the rectangle formation that says if it continues higher, the big resistance will be up at that 18. Let me just get that a little slow today. 1875 area. And the key support will be 1822. Close under 1822, uh, you're looking at something very different. And now what we're also looking at is because of that, we're going to go to silver. Silver is uh, at 2387. It's down just 0.02. It's just stuck in a range. This is the big deal. Here's the dollar. Look at the dollar right now. The dollar is right now. The dollar is up 10 ticks. It made a leg C yesterday. It did go back into the rectangle. This is now a path that I need to talk about and we'll talk about it in a moment. And look at the USD JPY, which is the tracks in the direction of the dollar. Uh, it's trying to run its feet. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, Basil Chapman. You know, this is going to be such a fascinating session. Um, we've been all over the show, all all on the upside. When I say all over the show, we've had a huge move, almost up 500 just recently, and now it's up 342 in the Dow, up 65 in the uh, S&P. So let me see if I can go back. So mentioning the den, I'm going to go to this right away, that would, this is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, people were talking about lumber. I'm looking at the actual wood ETF, the global iShares ETF, Timber and Forestry ETF, WOOD is a symbol trading at 88.20, up 65 cents. Uh, yes, it made a 95.27 peak E in the Chapman wave on the 13th of January. It cascades down to the 85s, and now it's trading at uh, 88.20. Let me just give you the exact low. Oops, click there. Okay, and that low was 84.97. Um, yeah. So And that was a peak D in the weekly chart. We were anticipating some kind of a pullback. If you remember when we were looking at the those weekly charts, um, when I showed the triple deal chart, etc. Now, let me go back to what I was talking about before. The dollar had a really nice move. I, I need to take just a moment to talk about this. I'll, I'll probably spend a little more time on it in my overview coming up on um, Saturday for my subscribers to my opening call. It's really an important moment in this particular uh, phase of, of the market, having had a pretty good pullback and not, not a major decline, about 8 to 12 percent, depends on which key indices you're looking at. Most importantly is the pattern that I always talk about, that you could get this as a fulcrum, the rectangle, the long, narrow trading band for the fulcrum, 96.94 on the, on the dollar index, Back on the daily chart, 2411, that's the 24th of November, comes back to 95.52 and then goes into a trading band between 96.94. It actually goes almost to the tick, 96.91 on the 15th of December. Uh, it's amazing. And then it just goes right through the support of 95.52. It tumbles down to the most recent low of 94, I think that was 43. No, 94.63. And here it is trading in 96.08 in leg D. Could be a peak C. Back into the middle part of the rectangle. And that's really important because what I said is this pattern very often, you go above it, then you go, and then you test the support. And 
if you start to make lower highs within the rectangle, it means that you've now essentially moved your slide rule down, and as a result, you can break below it. But what happens is that you come back and try to revisit the lower part of the rectangles. It's so quick that it's like you forgot your your sunglasses or something notion, whatever it is. And you go back to pick it up or say goodbye to your friends because you never had a chance that you were visiting for so long, for months, in fact. And then you go down. And the big thing is, do you test the left side low or do you come back? This time, instead, we've had red candle, sorry, green candle, red candle, green candle, red candle, green. And now we've had Two, well, the day's young. So far, two green candles since then. And it is already at a peak C. It's not those big moves up, big A, then a B and a C. So this is a big deal. Why? Because it says that geopolitical economic aspects are saying that in the global aspect, there's, there is, people don't realize just what volume you get in U.S. Uh, Treasury bonds in the bond market and what kind of volume you get in the dollar market. Because these are governments, these are not regular folks trading, these are governments that are, are getting in. And as a result, this move with the nine period in the weekly chart still way above the 14 is extremely positive. It says there could be a third test of the 96.90 area at some point. And most importantly, in the month of February, if there is a close below 94, that's going to be the first serious blow to the dollar in a long time. But in the meantime, the monthly chart is still acting pretty well. Then I want you to go to the EUR USD. I'm not sure why it always goes like that. It's, it's part of the uh, windows, I guess. If the mouse moves, if the, the, the arrow moves to a certain um, in a direction or a certain area, it goes back to the, the uh, to the basically your your background charts. So what we've got here is that the euro is down, made a peak E, a serious peak E in the Chapman wave, top back around about the 12th, 13th of January, is slumped down from the, oh, I should may as well tell you, I, I'm going to type it in here, 1.1418, 1 1.148, I believe it was. And yet we are at 1.127, so, and look, you couldn't hold above the 14 and 9 period moving averages in the weekly chart. That's usually not a good sign. It's the uppercase A, Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down pattern. Now what we're looking at is that the USD JPY, this is the yen, nice move up. And isn't this amazing? How on earth could you ever predict that a market made up of thousands, hundreds of thousands of of trades, millions probably of actual trades, can see a series of lower highs from the peak that was made in the USD JPY. I usually don't type these in because these are these get smoothed out and the price is changing. But at 116, 3.45, around about the 22nd or so of um, December, you start coming down and every one of the lower highs can make a beautiful trend line, barely pierced. Until today, so you've gone from December the two, sorry January the fourth, January the fourth with that high, and you've come down until today. That's what twenty something trading days. Uh, let's see how many: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen trading days, and all of a sudden, what are you looking at today? We snuck above that uh, trend line resistance, Chapman wave inside track and falling axe formation. But the MACD histogram is improving, but the, it's still got a long way to go for the nine period to move over above the 14 period. And the stochastic has got the W formation, but it's still only at 16%. And it's made a peak D already in the weekly chart and a leg D in the monthly chart. So it's just directionally that it's trying to move in the direction of the dollar. That's, a, that's really what I wanted to say. It took a long time to say. And if it goes back under 113.5, that's going to be a negative. That's going to be negative. It might take a little while for it to decisively, just time alone, we'll move it out of the trend line. But it needs to have all the technicals confirming in the nice the way above the 14. I want you to show you, I showed you gold, I showed you silver. Oh, BTC. So Bitcoin, 
is up 1,065. Yes, it's coming off a low that was made from 69,950 back in the week of the, November the 12th down to the low of 36,570. I would say just between you and me, 33,000 from 69,000, I would call that being cut in half. Therefore, any rally has to now build up a, a lot of credentials and, and veracity at the bottom to be able to get a sustained move in the Bitcoin. And I said to subscribers, we could see a, a balance and we have a particular stock that very low price, uh, a single digit stock that could in fact give us a, a, a sense of how to play this very inexpensively. We'll keep an eye on that. And that's another thing I'll talk about on Saturday, my overview. It's going to be a different one. It'll be a, quite a long one and it'll be very detailed. Looking out for the first quarter of 2022. I'll be are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, let's see. So what we're looking at here, I had a bunch of questions coming at the same time about the semiconductors. Could I go through some of them? What about the semi? So look, this is really what I'm talking about. You see that? Or 318.82, 22nd of November, he has the daily chart, November high at peak F, pulls back to 290, and then we go into a trading band and retest the 318, 314, 318 area a number of times, and then it breaks down decisively. This is a deeper uh, decline than you would usually see, that I would usually see in the rectangle formation that says, whew, we should have a rally back 
to the um, to the in the rectangle inside the rectangle formation before we come back down again. This is a little different. This says you've got a number of you've gone under the 200 period moving average. That's never a good sign. Not if you make a V-shaped type of recovery and you keep coming back and testing that 200 period moving average. That's why this is such an important week, not just an important day with a Fed talk. Why? Because. Um, within the context of, uh, so someone said, what about the width of the, yes, this is a rather wide, this isn't necessarily an elongated one until you open it up. And then you can say, hey, wait a minute, from where we came way back down in the 200 area, uh, 230 or so, 240 area back in October of 2021, we went all the way to 318. That, that's a big move. So this rectangle, yeah, it's not one of your narrow ones, but it's it's kind of, it's a sine wave that keep going over and under and over and under the midpoint. And now you've got broken to a one. Once you get the one to one, 318 down to 290. So that's uh, 20, uh, 28 points. Let's call it 30 points, almost a 10% correction. And then you go from the low that was made at about 287. Subtract 30, you get exactly 257. So there's your one to one using the... Uh, a TF and N lightning bolt technique. And what we're looking at here is within the context of the bounce so far, the day is so young. I mean, we've got a whole day. Look, now the Dow's only up 177. We'll be up 500 points almost just moments ago. This is a very important phase. So the reason why I say is because I am looking at two things and I'm trying to assess them. I can't get the information I'm getting from the internet is a little different to what I'm getting from people who are actually in the know, who, who who have a direct consultation with the semiconductor industry or uh, companies. I, this is really confusing in the sense that I am looking at, there is no way that we can't expect at some point a glut. But before we get the glut, we're looking at what is happening right now. So let me just run these quickly. Let's go alphabetically. Advanced micro devices. I made a low of about 106-ish just three days ago, trading at 113. It's under the 200 period moving average. It went, it went under it. And three days later, it's still not so far. It hasn't been able to get above 115.16. No, 115.36. Is that a six or a five? I need the correct figure so that you know what I'm talking about. 115.35. Um, it's at 113.72. It did try to get to 115.82, but couldn't hold it. Uh, so this is going to be important. Um, AMAT, Applied Materials. Applied Materials, what a move. 167 down to the 130 low uh, of uh, three days ago. Now it's at 137, just over the 200 pre moving average. It is so important that all of these semiconductors by Friday or Monday this coming week go above the, the two, uh, above their nine, the pink nine period exponential moving averages. For Amat, it's at 137 right now. It needs to close above 142.36 so it can push to the 145. Um, 14 period moving average. Let's go on. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I can go alphabetically. I should know. I usually I type these. Something. Let's do TXN, which is Texas Instrument. Had a really good result yesterday. It's up almost seven at 180.88. But look at this uh, down channel peak D top, the most recent top around about 198. Boom! It goes all the way down to yeah to the low three days ago of 170. Say 172, and now. It's just making lower lows and lower highs. Can it hold? Well, I do have it in the monthly chart. I call, I'm calling this a, a peak B. Uh, I could give it an alternate count of F, but I'm calling it B for now. That's Texas Instruments, one that you don't hear of very often, but evidently they 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 do a lot of work. I I, I, I thought I read in the automobile industry. Well, let's do the automobile industry. Look at Ford. Ford can't hold its gains. I said that move up into the 25.87 level on the 13th of January. Something's wrong. They don't, they don't have enough cars to sell. You can talk about the outlook with electric cars, but right now all the automobile companies, General Motors, having a terrible time. General Motors, look at this, from the 67 level down to 49, now it's at 53. Uh, that's not a great looking chart for now. I mean, you can just go on. Let's look at Tesla. Tesla is the king of the kings because they, 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 their production 
must use so many more semiconductors uh, than the others. They must, I mean, that, the electric car, the leader, they must have, by now, maybe they've cut back a little bit, but they, everything's electric. I mean, everything, you drive, the, someone has to change the, the, the volume, you have to go to the screen, it's pathetic. But it went to the 200 period moving average from 1243 uh, all-time high, back around about the 4th or so of November, hits 85, 851.47, 200 period moving average three days ago, a 930 round number close. And now it's at 947. It's struggling. I'm just trying to put this in perspective. And that's the reason why I haven't been able to go just fully bullish like I normally do in a, on a VIX, a VIX index uh, low, a high that was made at the market low uh, at 38.94 three days ago. It's trading at 29.62. This should be leading to the kind of action we saw Half an hour ago, with the Dow was up 500 and the S&P was up over 65. And it should be a follow through, even if there's just a, a narrow close tomorrow. Friday should be a whopper and we should have a real takeoff. I, I just think there are a lot of encumbrance, encumbrances. Let's go to um, Marvell. Marvell, oh, I don't want to take too much time. There's so much to talk about. Goes to the 200 period moving average from 93.85, high of. Um, that was a double bond of uh, the 8th of December, 93.85. It goes down to 66.97 and 66.95. So the 66.97 low, wouldn't you say that 93 to 66 point, did I say 37? Yeah, whatever I said. Um, uh, wouldn't you say that that is a significant decline? Marvell, one of the great semiconductor companies up until that high that was made. What about uh, NVIDIA? Uh, NVIDIA, the absolute darling of, of many, many people in the semiconductor area. It's just been decimated. Look at this. NVIDIA having a move today up, up 10 at 233, but it's gone from 346 with a round number 319 low on the 22nd of November, peak E all time high in the daily, peak F in the, in the monthly, and it slumps down to 208.80. I, I just need to check. Did I update that? I think that's correct. 208.88, and this is all it can do. That's why what the Fed says and what the market does going into this afternoon into tomorrow. It's going to be really important. I think the semiconductors are telling us that there is a decided slowdown in the areas that are using semiconductors, the availability of semiconductors at this particular point, and the effect that it's had. And you can see that in the automobile companies. That's why this is such an important point. I'll be back to talk about some other areas in the market. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So, uh, so in, in the dead, uh, no, this is in the Tiger YouTube uh, training. People said, uh, Tesla uses fewer but fewer ICs. Yeah, that, I, that, that was my concept when I was uh, talking about it, that uh, Tesla, um, over the period of time that it's been a hugely successful company, must have modified uh, their, their uh, whatever chips they do or whatever they do with the chips and that kind of con that, that kind of fits in with what I was looking at. The chances are that they are judicious in the use of they are able to be judicious in the use of their chips because they've already got everything connected. Now they just have to refine things. That's different to these companies that are trying to add all new features, etc. Pal was mentioned that Dan um, look at P A L L Palladium taking off. It's actually been taking off for a while. I think I'd mentioned it. As it was at the bottom here, just about, I think it was three weeks ago, maybe. Um, but I, I, we, I, I didn't have it. It's actually something I would consider for my subscribers because I think the whole area of the commodities is just looking so intriguing. I mean, the way the even the soft commodities have held so, up so beautifully. So this is peak A. B, and then remember, you have to count, Champion Wave, the only obligation you've got is to count each uh, each peak and trough, especially the peaks, and that resource, look, peak A, peak B, but underneath it, you get another little mini peak A, because you never took out the low starting point. If you take that out, you negate everything. You have to start over. But this is another peak A. That's a peak B. That's a peak C. And now we're in a leg D. You would think it's a leg C, but if you don't count the Chapman wave correctly, and all you have to do is count each peak, you'll see that you had a couple underneath and therefore, you're now in leg D in the daily, above the 200, way above the 200 period moving average of 203 at 218, up 13. And the weekly chart is A. Now, I'm starting to save everything. So I'm not losing charts like I used to. Oh, I shouldn't speak. Oh, 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 you shouldn't. I never said a word. Nobody heard me. I never said a word. But I am saving every, every, every moment I remember. I hit the save. And that really has changed everything about, I should have been doing this years ago. I would have charts, I would have a Microsoft say, going back to 1998 or 99, every day notated. In all my charts, I'd have all of them notated instead of having to redo them so many times. Every every note, every notation you see is hand done. Now, Steve Rhodes does a, a really good job, he's automated, but then you don't get all the refinements. For instance, a little inside ABC, probably that would have it at C rather than a D. That's that's what the eye visually, one second, not a second, in a split second, you're able to do, um, and that's that's important. That makes the 203 to 198 area really important support for palladium being in leg D. Um, question about the VIX, and I can't actually remember now exactly what happened. The VIX index on Friday was acting quite well, it was green. And what I'd said is if, if for the for a change on a Friday, if we closed green nicely, that would make the weekly chart really important. And what has happened periodically, what we've seen is that 
even if there's a green Friday, it doesn't go more than one green bar in the in the weekly chart of the VIX going back forever. A green bar, then a red bar, and, and then you get this little thin wick at the top. You know, you didn't get the thin wick at the top that was not the 4th of September 2020 when it hit 38.28, but the uh, October, I think, high at peak B right there at about 40. And then what happens is it plummets down to the 20s and rallies back to 37.51, 29th of January 2020. Uh, and, and each time you get a green candle, then it pulls back. And these are weekly charts. And now we're going to see what happens after Fed speak. Now, the Fed, you know, I've been saying all week, I don't think the Fed is going to aggravate the market. Most of the time, we've actually had pretty good rallies after the Fed speak. Today, they might Oh, maybe a day or so of a little shaky, shaky at worst. I don't think there's going to be a big tumble. We're up now. We're up, what? We're only up 102 right now. You see, this is what happens on Fed Day. And that's the reason why I did not want to chase anything at the open, because on Fed Speak Day, what happens is however low you are, however high you are, as you get into the 1.30 to 2 o'clock time frame, there's a narrowing and you can see a huge gain to go almost unchanged or a huge loss suddenly become unchanged as everyone waits the Fed. And then what happens is the market just continues doing what it was before. Well, what was it doing before? It depends where before is. If before is two days ago, that's great action. If it's three days ago, you're looking at serious decline. So all I'm saying is watch the VIX index. If the VIX index... This afternoon at 3.45, 15 minutes before the close, is starting to drop below today's low of 28.08. Let's get to the 27, and the market's just having a fabulous rebound. I suspect that this will continue now for a little while longer. If, in fact, there is a, a negative response, because we've already had the big anticipated positive response, if there is a negative response, and a, 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 a question is... So, are you still short the Dow via the DOG? And the answer is yes. I've raised the stop. We've taken a little bit of a gain, a, a little, a little off with a very nice profit. Um, we've still got the position short, and I'm just saying, let the market tell me. I missed two good opportunities in the Dow. Um, and I believe me, I absolutely thought of it. If I had on, on was it, what are we today? Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. If on Monday, when I was out the office and the market came back to minus 730, at that exact moment, I would have probably, I don't know, you got to be in that position. You can't just anticipate that you, you can't look 2020 and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but I think I might have said, let's take a really good gain in the DOG that we've got and let's switch to the diamonds with a four point stop and then raise it and just treat it as a trade. And that'll get us back to being only positive in the, all, all our positions, and it would have been positive because we still have the the, the diamonds long from uh, under 211 from way back uh, just after the low that we, that we got from March the 23rd of 2020 where we went long options and then we switched to the, we didn't switch, we actually added the Dow diamonds under 211. And now the diamonds are trading at what, four, uh, at 344? So there's, there's a really nice gain there. But I said we've taken a little bit off. We kept the core position of that position, the diamonds. Shorter term, we've been playing short, long, short, long. Now we've been short since, uh, uh, what was it, uh, on the third uh, DOG? Um, on the 11th of, of January at 31.66. And it's already had a really big move. It's already gone to the... Uh, uh, the DOG is already. Oh no, you didn't. You didn't do that, did you? No way. Oh, come on, come on, give me a break. Close break. Oh, don't close program. Please don't close. Okay. Um, so now we're up only 155 in the Dow. But believe me, the day is young. Uh, close program. Oh no, I had to close the program. I might have lost that. Um, it doesn't matter. Here we go. We've got one more segment to go. It's going to be an exciting day. It goes up 165. 
and I was talking about the DOG. Oh, the DOG has already had a, a typing all over the show. DOG. It had a high of 3460. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. That move down on the Dow at about 2.30, uh, if I'd gone along there, uh, switched from the short to the long side, I'd say I've got a little bit of a comfort factor, although it got retested yesterday. Got a little bit of a comfort factor, but I am concerned that the rollover has so many major stocks that are still. Look at this. I, I don't know if this was meant for me in the in the Tiger YouTube GGG three three Gs Grace Fluid Management Product uh, packages. Once or twice we've had this, but it's been on my list as an infrastructure stock. Uh, fluid Management Products packages. Grace Company GGG trading at seventy two thirty nine up ninety eight cents. You see, this is what my, my issue is here. It's different to a Caterpillar, which had a really nice takeoff from the low, and it didn't pull back like any any of the others. So that's infrastructure. That is deep, deep cyclicals, heavy-duty equipment, Caterpillar. Nice move. It's acting a little bit better, but a GGG fits into the category of other stocks that I've looked at, like Jacobs Engineering. I think that's one of them. Uh, look at that move. 
Jacobs Engineering going from the one, almost one, from 50 area, 23rd of November, down to 125. These are big moves, and these are infrastructure. So this is why I'm saying I'm trying to be careful. If I had got in there, I would have said, I think that we've made, established at least a decent bottom that can be tested a few times. I just don't know yet about the upside. So far, it isn't that V-shaped pattern that I usually look for. If it is, We'll just switch. There'll be plenty of stocks to buy. Don't worry about it. And it could be a rally that does last a little bit longer, you know, maybe two weeks, and then we have get a big test of the arch formation. I don't know yet. And that's why I'm saying that there are a lot of things that are looking very positive, but wow, there are a lot of things that are not, not looking well. So let's just make it as simple as possible. Uh, so the, if the VIX index, uh, sorry, if the SMHs can close by Thursday or Friday in the 278 level, that's fantastic. They're at 272. If the VIX index can slide deeply into the 27th instead of uh, the 2983 right now, that'll be a positive or lower than 27. So just keep that in mind.